I think for every university, funding at the moment is, is difficult. Uh, and, and we can see that across the whole range of higher education. And as a result, it's had to make some very difficult decisions. And one of the things that it's had to do is reduce the funding for research fellowships. So I, I see this not as filling a gap left by government funding problems so much as creating something in perpetuity which will always be there irrespective of what happens to, to government funding. So it seemed the right thing to do and we agreed to take on the responsibility of trying to raise the money to fund this fellowship. John Butterfield retired as master 25 years ago this year. Barry, of course, retires as master next year. Both of them have contributed such an enormous amount to the college uh, and particularly in the field of medicine and it seemed appropriate to create a fellowship in perpetuity uh, in memory of John and also to commemorate the tremendous uh, achievements of Barry as master and over the 25 years that he's been supervising and providing advice to students here. A research fellowship in Downing College, uh, as in other colleges, is a critical first appointment for someone having just completed their PhD. They then need to move in to a postdoctoral period of research and the importance of that period of research is they begin to establish themselves as independent researchers, as a stepping stone to establishing their own research programs. And without research fellowships, uh, those people might be lost to research, lost to Downing, lost to the university, and indeed may never find a position that suits their skills. A perfect example of this is, in fact, Amy Milton. She came to do a PhD in my lab, which she completed very successfully. And it was at that moment when it was clear to her that the only lab environment in the UK was the one in the Department of Psychology at the university where she could do her research but there were no positions available. I was at the end of my PhD and like most PhDs um, my research had brought up more questions um, than answers which happens a lot of the time in science and I really really wanted to answer those questions but there wasn't any funding for me to stay in the lab as a postdoctoral student. So I applied for research fellowships. All of the research fellowships that I was eligible for, it was something like 20 odd applications. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get the one here at Downing. Um, and I stayed on after my PhD and carried on with the research and answered the questions that were kind of burning away um, after I submitted my thesis. The importance of that period can then be seen by the fact that Firstly, she began also to teach Downing medical students and natural science students. So there's an important demonstration of the interplay between a young, active, uh, early career researcher and their capacity to teach our own undergraduate students and inspire them. And during that period of now increasingly independent research, she established herself to such an extent that she was able to apply for and be appointed to a full-time university lectureship. So the downing period of that research fellowship enabled Amy not only to establish her career to such an extent that she then got a permanent post, but also benefited downing students through her teaching. The research that I was doing when I was a research fellow then went on to form the basis of one of my graduate students' PhD research, which he's still writing it up at the moment, so it's still early days. But the research that he's done and that we've developed in the lab since then has then led on to um, the possibility that it'll actually get moved into human clinical trials. I think that's probably a nice example of how something that starts off as a relatively small thing being done by a single research fellow then goes on to not only kind of encompass graduate students who then develop that research further, but then allows for collaboration with clinicians and then ultimately will be developed into a treatment that can be used for people as well. Well, John Butterfield um, was a fellow when I joined the fellowship in 1976, and I took part in the election that resulted in him becoming master. And so, we 
began our college relationship as fellow and master and also a friendship. And what I was able to see when John was master was his extreme and devoted commitment to our undergraduate students and graduate students and his attempts to make their time here as successful and enjoyable as it could be. And I've carried that same kind of principle into my mastership. I believe the most important thing that I can do as master and the most important thing that the fellowship can do as, as a fellowship is to make this environment as special as it can be uh, so that we can have bright young students come here and fulfill themselves. The college has done so much for all of us as alumni uh, that it's only appropriate that we do something in return. Everybody uh, can be involved in, in the fellowship and everybody can be involved in raising money. It's not about writing a large check, it's, it's, it's about involving yourself. And people can give money on a monthly basis, people can give money on a quarterly basis. There are tax advantages to giving money regularly which people should look at and take advantage of. What's important is that they re-engage with the college, get back in touch with the college and enjoy being part of the community that, that is down here.